here are some ways to make dua. Number one, in your sujood, when you are in salat in sujood, after your prayers, sit down and make dua. In the nights, get up and make dua. While doing a good deed, you're doing a good deed, make dua. Like what Ibrahim alayhi salam Ismail did. When Ibrahim alayhi salam Ismail were building the Kaaba, they would make dua as they're building it. So as you're doing a good deed, make dua and the dua will inshallah be more likely to be accepted. In any language you like, it doesn't have to be in Arabic. You can make your dua. Some people say to me, but in my salat, do I have to make dua in Arabic? I say to you, the scholars said that in the compulsory prayer, stick to the Arabic ones that you've learned from the Prophet Sallallahu And in your sunnah and nafil prayers, you can do your dua in English. And that is the correct opinion, inshallah. Otherwise, you can make your dua in any language you want. In fact, the dua has to come out from your own heart. So even if you make a dua in the way that you know, like you might be sitting there and saying, Oh Allah, I don't know what it is, but there's something I'm not feeling right about this here. Allah, I don't know what to ask for, but just whatever is good within your mercy. That's it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows exactly what you need. Another thing is by mentioning your past good deeds. Some people, they say to me, isn't that blackmail? I couldn't believe that question. I said a story about three men who were stuck in a cave and one of them, he said, uh, they got together and they said, let's all take a corner and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by mentioning some of our good deeds that we've done in the past and maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will relieve us from this cave. And then the first man, he said, Ya Rabb, I had uh, parents who I loved and I used to serve them a lot. And then one day they asked for some water. I went and got them water. I came home and I found them asleep, Ya Rabb. So I stayed next to them waiting for them to wake up any minute just to give them that water i didn't want to also disturb them and they didn't wake up until fajr oh my lord then i gave them the water oh allah if you know that i did this for your sake and only to please you and out of love for my parents then save us from this cave and the rock moved only a little bit the second person he said oh allah i had a cousin and she was very pretty and very gorgeous and i tempted for her well he says one day i offered her money and i said i'll give you money if you will do haram with me and she said no. Then she, then she became destitute, destitute at one point. And then I offered her again. And then she said, okay, you give me the money because I'm so much in need. It's a matter of life and death. And then he said, when I had power over her and I was about to do the haram with her, she reminded me. She said, fear Allah, my cousin. And if you want to take me, then take it in the halal. He said, I feared Allah and this woke me up. It hit me. I went away and I let her keep the jewelry. Oh Allah, if you know for your sake, I went against and withheld my temptation for your sake, save us from this cave. So the rock moved only a little bit, but well, not enough. The third person, he said, oh Allah, I used to have a business and I had investors in, in crops. And after everyone invested, the, the crops came out and I gave them profit. One of them didn't take his profit on that day. He went and about a year later, he came back and then he wanted his profit. I gave him a little bit of profit. So he wanted his profit. And then I said to him, you know what? Your profit stayed with me and it made one year's profit extra. So you deserve everything you see in front of you. That all came from your investment. He said, you're joking. He said, wallahi, it's yours. This is our contract. And he took everything. He said, Ya Rabbi, if you know that I fulfilled my promise of my contract for your sake, save us from this cave. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved them. If you have good deeds and you remember them, mention them to Allah. Someone said to me, is this blackmail? You're mentioning your, your, your good deeds with Allah. Give me this for that. No. No, subhanallah, worship is dua and dua is worship. So what you did over there is actually worship. All you're doing is, oh my Lord, that worship that I did for you, I'd like to use it now. And I'm in desperate need. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you that as a gift. He says, I will let you use even the worship that you did and I will not take away your deeds at all. This is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and out of his mercy. And finally, brothers and sisters, this is beautiful. Did you know that the angels also can make dua for you? I'm going to give you five ways to get the angels to make dua for you. Number one, number one, when you repent to Allah, making tawbah, you're doing something wrong and you decide to change your life. This is the best dua. The angels, they say, the angels that bear the throne and those that are around Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the, the Lord, and praise Him. They believe in him and ask forgiveness for the believers saying, Oh, our Lord, you encompass everything with your mercy and knowledge. So forgive those that repent and follow your path and guard them against the chastisement of hellfire. Our Lord, admit them to the everlasting gardens you have promised them and those of their fathers and spouses and progeny that were righteous. Surely you alone are most 
mighty, most wise, and guard them against all ills. He whom you guard against ills on that day, to him you have surely been most merciful. This is the great triumph. All this dua the angel makes for you when you repent to Allah. Number two, checking in on your sick or ill brother or sister when they are in need or they need help. The Prophet ﷺ said that 70,000 angels pray for this person from morning until sunset if they checked on that sick person or the person in need in the morning. And they make dua for you, 70,000 from sunset until fajr if you checked on that person at sunset. 70,000 angels. The hadith is in Tirmidhi and Ahmad. Number three, while sitting briefly after you pray and you don't talk to anyone, so long as you're sitting there, let's say five minutes, the angels make dua for you to forgive you while you're sitting there. And number four, when you give charity. And number five, please listen to this and this is the conclusion. If you want the, the angels to make dua for you, number five, you make dua for your believing brothers and sisters around the world. The Prophet ﷺ said in Sahih Muslim and others, making dua for your brothers and sisters in their absence, not in their face, because you don't want anything from them. In their absence is an accepted dua. Standing at that person's head is a delegated angel specifically for you. Every time the person makes dua for their brother or sister in their absence, the angel says, Ameen, and for you is the same, and for you is the same. So brothers and sisters, make dua for your family, make dua for your brothers and sisters, for every believer around the world, two billion Muslims, two billion duas from that one angel. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you, my brothers and sisters. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless our brothers and sisters in Gaza, in Palestine. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless and protect our brothers and sisters all around the world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on, the, on their martyrs and make their children waiting for them at the fountains and the doors of Jannah. My beloved brothers and sisters, every one of us, we need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we need to ask from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have a lot of needs, a lot of wishes, a lot of dreams, a lot of problems. In our life so to get the things that we want from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we need to supplicate to him we need to make dua to him and there are many different ways to make dua to him in which way if you make dua Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will answer your dua make dua while doing good deeds make dua after doing good deeds and after making dua do some charity keep doing good deeds your Dua being answered, the probability will increase in many folds. Rasulullah told about the three men whose dua were accepted because of their good deeds. They were stuck inside a cave with a big rock, and everyone asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a good deed they have done and asked Allah to protect it, to protect them, to save them because of their good deed that they have done. And it's possible in the world you can ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the good deeds that you have done only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not to show off others, not to look yourself a, a righteous or a kind-hearted man. No, you are doing the good deeds only to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when you fall in trouble, you can ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the good deed that you have done for Allah and Allah will definitely help you. So it teaches us that do good deeds in any opportunity you get. Do not belittle any good deed. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will definitely reward you for your good deeds and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with good deeds then your dua will be answered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Help us build an Islamic studio at www.islamicstudio.org. Link in the description.